Hello, I'm Dr. Ron England, and this lecture today is going to be on debugging. And the reason I'm doing a lecture on debugging is because I've seen um, many of my students struggle through trying to find out answers to the problems that they run into. So this might be one of the most useful lectures that they have. So the first thing I'm going to do when I go to debugging is let's let's look right here. I have a, um, a web project that's up here, and I want to start it on this specific page right here. So I actually want to start the project with this as the default page. So I go ahead and go to default, and then I click the uh, go, and it's going to bring it up in Firefox. And here is the application. Um, this is the Smata online application, and it, here it is with its home page in the browser. Now, what I want to do in this case is I actually want to stop execution of this program at a specific location that I've denoted here with breakpoints. And I'll show you how to toggle them on and off. Uh, you can use the F9 key, or you can use debug, which is toggle breakpoint. Okay, and then I can turn the breakpoint back on. So I can turn a breakpoint on right there. So what I want to do is I want to stop the program execution when I get to this spot because I think something's going wrong or I might need to check on some values here. So um, now we need to go back to the program and we need to get it to get to that point. So this, how to do that is here and I click on the edit. And now as you can see, it stopped. Now it actually stopped at a breakpoint prior to the breakpoint that um, I had actually set there. So let's look at what's going on here. Now at this location, I have, I, the execution is stopped right here at this line in the select, and I can actually hover over different values here of variables and see what the value is. I can also look at more than just that. So I'm gonna go up here and look at the debug menu, and I got this nice thing here called a quick watch. Well, I can see, you know, there's the value of the expression that I want to evaluate as owner, but it can also give me some of the other things that I uh, might want to look at. And um, we're going to go ahead and close this right now because I'm going to do something a little bit more complex here in a second, but let's continue on. Now, the next thing that we have here is I can show you stepping into. So we're going to have to step into or hitting the F11 key. Now, I'm going to use the buttons up here, but I usually use the key shortcuts. F9 to toggle a breakpoint on and off and the F11 to step into. So now I click this and it goes to the next line in the execution. And then it goes to the end of the, uh, the method there. You see the yellows right there. And then it goes to where it was called from. And then it'll go back to the original calling. And as you can see, it goes all the way backwards to now I'm in a different, now I'm in the editwatershed.cs form. So I'm actually in the code behind of the form. And as I continue on with this, I can just hit um, over and over again, I can hit the step into button and see what the order of execution is. So if I've got a problem with what's going on, I can see that order of execution. Now if I want to continue on to the next breakpoint, I can go ahead and hit the continue and it will continue on to the next breakpoint. Now here's something that's kind of interesting here that I want to show you here. This w.input properties, even though it hasn't been called yet, is actually within the scope of the method. So if I go to the debug and the quick watch, I can actually do that. W.input properties. And it is not a property, it is a method call that returns something, but I can get back the return of what actually will be called when what will actually be returned when I call that. Because as you can see right here, I actually have this call here that sets it equal to that value, okay, which allows me to look at very closely with a very high level of granularity all the things that are going on. So, important for you to know how to do if you're going to be doing debugging. You need to be able to stop the execution of a program and see what's going on. I showed you a tool which was right here, this step into, which is the F11, okay. I can also, there's other tools, which is step over, which will jump over it, and step out, which is also another one. But um, you know, the, the most important one that you actually are going to see is this one right here is the step into. I also showed you how to pull up a quick watch window, which is control DQ, um, which I also use the shortcut there most of the time too. Okay, I have this ability to toggle breakpoints on and off. And the delete all breakpoints is also very handy when you're done debugging. You can turn off all your breakpoints and just let the program execute. So knowing these three things with debugging, you should be able to now very quickly and easily work through a lot of different types of debugging problems while you're working in the debugging environment. So I can now go back, continue the execution of my program, and hopefully it's working the way that I want it to work. 
Doesn't matter if it's not because I can go back and easily debug it. Thank you very much and good programming.